The ball crunch is a great way to put your exercise ball to use to work your upper abs and obliques. Start by sitting on top of the exercise ball and place your feet flat on the floor. Slide forward slowly, rolling the bottom half of your glutes off the ball until your lower back is centered atop the ball. Now place your hands lightly behind your ears, inhale slightly more deeply than normal, and without pulling on your head, crunch forward and squeeze your abs, rotating one elbow toward the opposite knee on the way up. At the top of the movement, hold the position, squeezing those abs, and then return back to the start position, rotating your body slowly and deliberately. Pause only for a second or two at the bottom and repeat, focusing on that side of your body. Only when you finish the reps in that set should you work the other side. The second program, again, that you can alternate with the first on a daily or weekly basis, begins with the exercise ball crunch. And I want you to do three sets of those at 15 to 20 reps. Then we'll move into the vertical bench leg raise, three sets of 15 to 20, and finally the decline bench twisting crunch for three sets of 15 to 20. The exercise ball crunch gives you a little more stretch than the regular floor crunch. Seat yourself comfortably on top of your exercise ball and firmly place your feet flat on the floor. Slide forward, rolling the bottom half of your glutes off the ball until your lower back is centered on top of it. Now place your hands at the sides of your head. Don't grab and pull on your head, just rest your hands gently on the back of your skull. Now. Inhaling and holding your breath, crunch your upper body forward, making sure your abs are doing the work, lifting your shoulders up and forward towards your hips. When you reach the top of the movement, which is as vertical as you can get without falling off your ball, exhale and lower your torso back down again. The second exercise using the vertical bench is the leg raise. Again, step up into the vertical bench, grasp the handles, and keep your back and forearms firmly on the pads. Extend your legs, keeping them bent slightly to avoid stressing your lower back. Now, inhaling, curl your hips slowly to rotate your pelvis and bring your legs up as high as you can. Remember, Every millimeter you can squeeze out on the way up will pay off for you in stronger abs. Push yourself here, and when you can't lift any higher, hold that position, contract your abs, and slowly lower your legs, then repeat. Once again, avoid swinging your legs up or letting them flop down. Cool, controlled, focused movements. That's the key to maximum efficiency and results. To work your upper abs and obliques, adjust the bench so that your calves are resting on the pads and your ankles are snugly under the foot rollers. Sitting up straight, place your hands lightly behind your head and lower your torso slowly toward the bench and stop at about a 30 degree angle between your back and the bench. Inhaling and holding your breath as you crunch, twist as you come up, bringing your elbow toward the opposite knee. Don't jerk or thrust or sway or swing as you come up. Just nice and easy, nice and steady. Get a good contraction as you twist into the end of the motion. Hold a second, then follow the same twisting arc in reverse, lowering yourself again to about 30 degrees off the bench. Do all your reps for one side of the body, and when you've worked that side, then switch over to the other side, twisting the other way. If you're not able to do very many reps, use less of an angle of decline. Conversely, if you feel you're not getting enough resistance, increase the angle and go for it. Just a cautionary note, and we will make this point a few times in this program. Don't overdo the angle downwards. Keep it 45 degrees or less. There's no great benefit to going past that. We're going to increase the sets up to four for the advanced program. That means we're going to move through four sets of hanging leg raises, 12 to 20 reps, then four sets of cable crunches, 12 to 20 reps, and then we'll finish with four sets of oblique cable crunches, also for 12 to 20 reps. As always, watch our experts for perfect technique.
This is a great exercise. I love the hanging leg raise. Jump or step up into a high bar and hang freely, making sure your feet don't touch the floor. Inhale and hold your breath as you bring your legs slightly behind your body, then quickly but smoothly raise them forward and upward as high as you can. Keep your legs straight but not locked as you raise them. At their peak, slightly above parallel to the ground, hold the contraction for one to two seconds as you exhale. Then relax slightly as you return to the hanging starting position. Pause momentarily, then repeat. If this exercise is too hard at first, bend your knees a little bit more as you raise your legs. The key here to really work the abs is to lift high. Because until you hit 30 or 40 degrees here, your hip flexors are doing most of the heavy lifting. So lift your legs as high as possible. The cable crunch is great because it works your abs through a greater range of motion than the traditional crunch. Not only that, it focuses more on the abs while excluding other muscles like the hip flexors. To begin, stand facing a high cable pulley machine and grasp the handles of a rope attachment so that your palms face each other. Take a few steps back and kneel down about three or four feet away from the base of the machine. Your knees should form a slightly less than 90 degree angle. Try not to pop up too fast or sway out of this position through the exercise. Lean forward and slightly arch your lower back. Your torso should be almost parallel to the floor. Bend and hold your arms at a 90 degree angle over your head. Now slowly contract your abs so that they pull your torso toward the floor until your elbows approach your knees. All this motion should originate from here, from the lower vertebra and then move upward. If your hips get involved, you're limiting the effectiveness of the exercise. Same is true if you're pulling with your arms. So focus and contract your abs, which will do all the work of flexing your torso forward, and you'll end up with a rounded back like this at the end of the movement. Right here, at the bottom of the movement, concentrate on squeezing your abs. Pause, then slowly return to the starting position and repeat. Remember, move slowly and deliberately, and don't let momentum do the work for you. That's the cable crunch. Simple, powerful, thorough. This exercise offers a smooth range of motion as you work your obliques. Facing the machine, kneel down three or four feet in front of a rope handle connected to a high pulley. Turn your body about 45 degrees so you're at an angle to the machine. Then grasp the rope near the top or back of your head. Elbows bent and lock your arms in this position. All right, we're ready to begin. Inhaling, twist away from the machine to the opposite side, bringing one elbow toward the opposite knee. Crunch down at the bottom point of the movement, hold that, then return back up slowly along the same path, doing reps on one side first, and only when you're done, moving to the other side. Slow movements, deliberate, smooth, and controlled. There are three crucial, non-optional steps you must do to wrap up your workout. Warm down, stretch, and replenish. I don't consider these as part of a post-workout routine because every serious trainer knows that these elements are as essential to your program as any lift, crunch, or pull down. When you're finished with your workout, move into a five minute, low intensity aerobic exercise. Hit your bike, the treadmill, or whatever suits you best, but keep your heart rate under 100 beats per minute. This allows your metabolism to slow gradually and your body to recover in a controlled fashion. The second step of wrapping up your workout is to stretch the muscles you have just worked. For more detail on the importance of stretching, refer to the stretching pod at the end of this program. For now, remember that you should move through stretches with slow, deliberate, controlled movements with no bouncing or jerking. Start with the lower back stretch. Lying on your back, you pull your left knee toward your shoulder with both hands. Hold for 30 seconds, release, return to start, then do the same with your right knee. Repeat three or four times for each leg. Now we do side bends to stretch the obliques. 
slowly bending over to the right into a comfortable stretch, hold there for 15 to 30 seconds. Feeling the stretch the whole time, then return to upright. Repeat for both sides four times each. The spinal twist stretch helps untie your obliques and stretch your lower back as well. Lying on your side like this, twist your torso using your opposite arm on the knee until you feel the stretch in your side. Hold for 20 to 30 seconds. Do both sides four times. Excellent. Replenish your body right after you're finished training. See the nutrition segment of this program for more information. Truly successful ab training has as much to do with the power of your mind as it does with the power of your obliques. With all the insight and expertise our team has brought to you throughout this series, I want to make sure that one critical point comes through loud and clear. Concentration means everything. Not just physically concentrating tension in your muscles, but mentally concentrating on technique, preparation, nutrition, and very importantly, on staying motivated. What motivates the most successful resistance trainers? You might think the kind of abs you see every month in muscle and fitness, or increased athletic skill, or weight loss, or improved metabolic health. Sure, all these things go a long way, but true motivation, the kind of motivation that will stay with you through the hard times when the results aren't showing up quite as fast as you would like, comes from here. Every time you crunch, you should be mentally tracking every element of the movement, that means you're watching your breathing pattern, your technique, keeping your shoulders and back out of it. You're on guard against recruiting extraneous muscles to compensate for bad technique. It means you're concentrating on your abs as you work them. Imagine that they're rippling right through your skin as you fully extend and contract them throughout the full range of motion. Shut out all external influences and master your mental focus.